All right, and we're back. Um, so I left this game running uh, offline for about nine hours. And as you can see, we now have uh, $3 billion, uh, generated $3 billion, and also about $4 million uh, from the Hacknet nodes. Um, and then our t that brings uh, our total money up to $5 billion, which is what we need to purchase the formula script. Um, all right, let's go to, I guess, the home and then go to dark web. And then let's list everything again. So we what we want to buy is this formulas.exe. And the reason why I'll show you why the, the formulas exe is such a, I guess, a very expensive tool and also very, very overpowered um if you know how to use it so i'm just gonna buy this uh buy formulas.exe and then there you go um so now we have the formulas exe in our home computer i guess the purpose for this video is to improve upon um some of the scripts that we're running um using that formulas.exe file. Uh, so as you can see, if you look at my stats, um, I guess a bit of time passed since uh, I guess I purchased that um, the formulas.exe file, uh, mainly because I was trying to figure out what I, I wanted to do uh, for, uh, I guess, the rest of this video. Um, so one of them is, I guess, improving upon identifying the the targets for our gimme money script um, so if you look at our gimme money script here we have a lot of i guess nodes that are running um, the same script uh, to the same node uh, this means that when all the the servers execute the hack at the same time uh, that that fantasy server will get depleted very very quickly and at the moment we have a lot of servers that are running that give me money script quite heavily especially uh, some of the especially my purchase servers which can run up to uh, 1706 uh, threads and I guess how um, how the the threads affect your scripts is that it acts as a multiplier meaning that um, let's say that one hack command produces $200, it's gonna get multiplied by uh, 1,706. Um, and then let's say that the hack can generate around 2,000, it's gonna grow quite a lot. And if you imagine that uh, for all the servers running uh, multiple threads, it's definitely gonna deplete the fantasy server very, very quickly. So we wanna create a script that can find uh, the server with the largest amount of money and then we want to switch to that server uh, when we get the chance um, so off camera I created a, a script called findtargets.js uh, and what this script does is that it's gonna report all the all the nodes within the server that you can hack and then uh, uh, report some information about these nodes. Um, it also internally uses formulas.exe uh, just so that you can uh, get a taste on what this uh, library can do. Um, I also did some refactoring. Uh, so for example, you, you notice this new utils file. Uh, essentially what this utils file has are uh, reusable functions that can be used in any script. Everything inside this utils files were extracted from my auto deploy script, mainly because majority of the functions that we use in auto deploy is also used uh, in our uh, find target script. So I extracted things like, uh, you know, get, get network nodes, uh, penetrate, get number of cracks, uh, can penetrate, has RAM, and all that stuff. Essentially, things that are essential for checking information about our nodes as well as the network. Um, so without further ado, let's get to the, the logic of this find targets uh, script here. 
Um, so to import files, you want to use this import uh, statement at the top, and then you want to use the this bracket to import specific functions from that utils file. Um, alternatively, you can import it using import star as utils from utils.js. Uh, but the problem with this is that um, it's gonna import the entire uh, RAM requirements for this utils file. And what we want to do is we, would, we just want to pull in specific ones so that uh, we minimize the uh, RAM requirements for to run this script. And also I discovered that you can actually find out the script's RAM from uh, down here. Uh, so this file takes around 4.6 gigabytes to run. Uh, so let's uh, go through, I guess, some of the um, logic for this. Uh, it's somewhat all over the place. Uh, actually, I'm just going to move some stuff down just so that our main logic is down here and then all our helper functions is and variables are up here. Um, so starting from, I guess, the fields. Uh, so I only have um, f three fields. So the first one is the compare field. Essentially, this compare field is used uh, to uh, customize our query whenever we're finding the target. So for example, if we want to sort by max money, we just pass in max money. Uh, if we want to sort by hacking chance, then we, we pass in the hack chance as a string, uh, as an argument. Um, and then if compare field is undefined, it gets set as the max money, meaning that if we run find targets as is, it's going to sort the, the results by the, the maximum money of the server. Um, over here is essentially just grabbing the player object. Um, this player object is actually used by that formulas.exe file. Um, to get stats about a server, you need to pass in first the server and then also the player. And then from that, it's going to do some internal calculations. Um, and then lastly, it ha uh, we have this file name. Uh, I just want to show you guys how to write uh, to a file. Uh, just so that you know how to actually do that within this game. Um, so let's scroll down to, I guess, the main logic here. So the first thing I do is grab the network nodes from the entire uh, network. Uh, again, it goes through all the nodes within your the graph. And yeah, I, I, I basically repeated that over and over again in the past videos. But yeah, there, there you go. Uh, so that, that's what it does. It grabs all the nodes uh, within your network, uh, everything that you can visit. Um, and then after that, after retrieving the network nodes, we then filter out all the nodes that we can hack. And what this can hack function does, if we open up our utils file, uh, it basically just compares the player's hacking level to the server's required hacking level. And if what our hacking level exceeds the server's hacking level, then this one will return true. And the reason why we want to filter the one, um, to the ones that we can hack is because we can't really run the hack command if we don't have uh, the required hacking skills to run it. So that's why we want to filter all the network nodes uh, to the ones that we can actually hack in. Uh, and then also we filter out anything that starts with pserve because that's our purchase server and we don't really want to hack our purchase servers. Um, as soon as you, we retrieve all the hackable nodes, we then uh, convert all that hackable node and extract node information from it. Uh, if we go into this node info, it's very, very simple. What this function does is that it returns information about the server. So it returns the, the name, uh, the maximum money that it stores, um, the hacking chance, and then also the required hacking level. Um, and then to retrieve those values, first we retrieve the server. Uh, again, this server object is used by the formulas uh, uh, API. Um, and then this server is passed into this uh, hack chance uh, function here. 
um, and this one will accurately calculate the the chance that um, you know the, the chance that your hack will succeed when running that on the server based on the player stats um, and then we get the standard maximum money and then required hacking level here and then we just pass that into uh, an object um, so after grabbing all the node details we then sort them in ascending order and then we do that by uh, calling the sort function of the array and then we pass in a comparator uh, what this comparator does is that it essentially just um, orders it um, from in ascending order based on the comparator field so for example uh, if compare field is max money it's gonna sort the nodes in ascending order based off the value of the the max money field here um, so that's what it does so it's gonna sort the all the node details in ascending order and then finally we then write the nodes to a file um, so this one you is sort of like my extra just so that uh, to give you guys some context on what you can do in this game um, essentially first we look at all the nodes and all the node details and then convert them all into I guess string lines so uh, what I do is that I look at the node all the fields and then just uh, push a, a field mapped to the value uh, and then at the end of it I then uh, push a, a blank string so that there's a gap between each node information um, as soon as I convert all of the nodes into a bunch of lines um, I then uh, combine it using the new line character so every single line will be in a new line um, and then I use the write function that Netscript has and what this one will do is that it's gonna write it to a, a file um, the the file that you specified uh, one important thing about the file name is that it needs to end with a .txt txt I tried using other uh, extensions and th this is the only one that works so make sure that whenever you're uh, writing file name it needs to end with a .txt um, and then uh, I, we pass in the file content and then this uh, this letter so what this letter does is that it represents the mode so W means write mode A means append and the difference between write mode and append is that if the file exists um, it's gonna overwrite whatever's inside it uh, whereas if it's in append mode if the file exists it's gonna just uh, append new information at, uh, at the bottom of the file so we don't want to append any information because it's going to be a massive file so we want to overwrite if it does exist uh, and then we send an alert and what this one will do is that it's going to show uh, I guess like a message window and also we put up a toast so what this one does is that it's going to show uh, a toast bar over here at the side and then it's going to show uh, wrote targets to and then the file name uh, and for three milliseconds uh, this one is a variant so if you want to show an error you can do error here info is just a, a color blue uh, toast error or color red toast and then warning is a, a color orange toast um, so that, that's what it does and uh, let's uh, let's give it a go so let's run find targets uh, and then we, we'll just leave it as it is so that we sort by money and then we run this as you can see there's the toast here information toast that's gonna run for three seconds and it's gonna hide so it tells it tells us road targets to network uh, report.txt um, and then it also shows us an alert which contains all information about our server so this is really good uh, for making a judgment on I guess what to hack next um, so I guess what this one, this information tells me is that the hub contains the most money and then we have a 30% chance of hacking it. So I'm probably just going to auto deploy the, the gimme money script to point to the hub. Um, also another thing is you would see this network report.txt file generated. So that's what the write command does is that it's going to 
I guess, write to a file. And then if we want to revisit that uh, again in the future, we can press cat network report, so the file name. And then we can see all the results again. Um, all right, so that's that's what it does. Uh, and then uh, I guess the next step is to just auto deploy to the hub. Is that what it says? Yeah, the hub. Um, and then we can do that by uh, first going to the active scripts, uh, stopping this, and then running auto deploy. Uh, the hub and then what that one will do is that it's gonna update all the scripts uh, to point to the hub and there you go uh, so that's that's how you I guess generate a script that can uh, give you a report on uh, what node or server to target next um, I guess in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to upgrade this Gimme Money script so that um, it, per it performs a lot better and produces a lot more money because there's, a, there's an advanced upgrade uh, that I can do uh, to the algorithm uh, using that formulas.exe file. So I, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one.